Welcome back guys to another video. Today I'm here with Floyd and we're gonna be checking out some of the best cuisine here in Palinan area in Makati. This is going to be areas and spots you wanna hit up that are non-touristy. This is the real, true Philippines. You don't wanna eat at some fancy schmancy, you know, where all the Americans are going. That's not what you want. You gotta go where the tuk-tuks are lined up. What's the name of your guys' restaurant? Name? Name of restaurant? Oh, no name? Arnel Canteen. You guys definitely gotta check this place out. I've been coming here for about five years. It's honestly one of my favorite go-to spots. How many years has Arnel Canteen been around? How many years has it been? Seven years. Seven. Ah, seven years. So a bit wow. new. It was only two years old when I first came here. And uh, they also have got new additions to the family, which we're gonna check out here. Where's the puppies? How much to buy a doggy? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, that dog. Okay. I'm I'm only the yaya. I'm the nanny. You're the nanny of the dog. And so, either for free or maybe sell a dog. What do you think we want today? We definitely need to try the la ying. This is a yeah. famous Nicole food. Very coconutty. Vegetable. Oh, is that not la ying? Yeah, gabi leaf. Okay. This one is little and this one is Ah. It looks very nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we'll do one la ying and one this. They have the jackfruit here. Earlier on, they had the jackfruit. Yeah, banana heart is gone now. I need the sake. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this one and this one and then that one too. Next time, I'll come earlier and do the jackfruit for sure. Salamat po ate. Bitter gourd, yeah. I love bitter gourd. I love bitter gourd. Okay. First time, right? Yes, first time. Gusto kong bitter gourd at uh, laning. Laing. Salamat po. Gabe. Laing gabe. Yeah, gabe is the leaf from the Toro leaf. Gotcha. I think I like laing. This is the bitter melon. It's honestly one of my favorite dishes. But like, it's a very acquired taste. It's yeah. in the name. It's very bitter. I'm just gonna get a little bit, as we can see. Maybe it might be a yay or it might be a nay. So, are you a fan of IPA, by the way? I am, but uh, not not really. I prefer just regular beers, but. So this is like, a, you know, if a vegetable had the flavor of hops, mm -hmm. this is that vegetable. Mm. So okay. if you love IPA, you might like this. All right, let's see what it's talking about. Cheers. Cheers. Extremely acquired taste. Extremely bitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you want to get healthier, or you drank too much last mm -hmm. night. This is a perfect, like, you know, hangover cure, yeah. or like just good for your body in general. Mm -hmm. It's really good though. It's really flavorful, but that bitterness definitely is kicking my ass right now. This particular one is more savory than anything in the eggs. Really add a lot of flavor to it as well. Like, kind of cuts down on the bitterness. Mm -hmm. I've had this where it was even more bitter. It's one of my favorite things, like, as far as like vegetables go. But many countries in Asia also make bitter melon soup, mm -hmm. and different kinds of dishes with bitter melon. This yeah. is just one way to make bitter melon. Gotcha. But you know what, you are right. It feels like I just drank like mm. half an IPA. Lying can be really good or it can be just very mediocre. It just depends. Gotcha. And what exactly is this? Yeah, so lying is actually like a kind of vegetable coming from the toro. It's the toro leaf and it's called the gabi. So gabi is the leaves from the toro. And they love eating that in the Philippines. It's super popular. You can find this in America, but it's extremely rare. And how is this usually prepared? They stick a lot of coconut milk inside here, and then other spices, and sometimes it's very salty. Right. And I don't like the one that's super salty that actually goes with the rice. So, yeah, sometimes it's like one that needs to be mixed with the rice, sometimes oh, wow. it's not needed to be mixed with rice. Let's go. Oh, oh. good bowl. Yeah, not here. 
Oh, wow. Because the whole chicken will allow you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the good one. The flavor is absolutely on point. The chicken fat oils in there, it just really has given the whole thing a lot of flavor with all that chicken fat and everything. What hits me is that coconut. I love that coconut. Really great. Almost like a stew or a curry type of flavor. It's really good. I have never had it to where the chicken bones are like inside the lying though. I've yeah. always had it like to where the lying was like just, you know, there with the coconut. Yeah. So this is a really special one. You really taste the chicken flavor. Uh, this to me is like a 10 out of 10 flavor for, for lying. This is what I fell in love with. This is how you know I really like something. If I go in for that second spoonful or forkful, I really, really like it. This one's a really good one. No, this is a winner. Hey, I feel like, yes sir, oh, we have soup. Yeah, yeah, we love the soup. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Oh my gosh, we got some nice fresh soup right here. Soup on a nice hot summer day. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. I'm gonna cleanse the palate with a little rice and soup. Oh yeah, I'll try a little bit of the rice too. We are in the Philippines, you gotta eat your rice, guys. Okay, I know we're not ranking the soup, but I gotta say, I'm digging this bra. Okay, I feel like I'm tasting like a little bit of coconut, like a little bit of coconut milk in cooked with the rice, but maybe it's all in my imagination. Yeah, that actually might be an effect of us trying so many dishes with coconut yeah. today. Might be the placebo effect. Or maybe it was the, like the soup that like some savoriness. Yeah. I just dipped it like you, and I got this yeah. coconut flavor, but I think it's just the rice. Now, just to put it in context, right now in the Philippines, it's hotter than whatever the temperature of the soup is. We are sweating through our shirts. But hey, I'm digging this. I'm loving this. I'm not yeah. mad. I'm having a good time. They got the fans blowing. We have a tita over in the front, you know, serving up the food. You know, it's a great vibe. Another thing I really like about this place is the amount of lizards you can see running up and down the walls. Like these geckos are literally everywhere in the Philippines. And that's one thing I really like about these local places is like, just like the geckos. Oh yeah, that's, that's Frankie the gecko. He's always chilling out in the, uh, the wall. A gecko on the wall. But they're really good because they keep the flies away. Absolutely. Ooh, what's this? Okay, so this is what I've been wanting to try. This is Tokwak Baboy. This is tofu and my favorite, lechon. Pork is a big deal in the Philippines. Not so much steak, not so much lamb, but definitely pork and chicken, and Filipinos know pork like nobody's business. So I'm really excited. This looks really great. It looks very well seasoned. I'm pretty sure there's some soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar. So we're gonna taste that saltiness of the pork, that umaminess of the, the soy sauce and vinegar. And I think it's gonna pair very well with the, with the rice, so let's dig in. I just love the tofu. When the tofu absorbs all the flavors of the pork, that's like when you know they got it right. Exactly. Oh yeah. But make sure you get a nice, good piece of pork as well. Cause I think the best part of this combination is like the texture. Yeah, the texture of the tofu with the pork right. and uh, just everything kind of mixes together really exactly. well. Exactly. So yeah, check it out. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It reminds me of like tuna fish salad, like tuna salad. It's got like that kind of flavor. The tofu has got a lot of vinegar, like mayonnaise almost. Mm -hmm. So there's no mayonnaise. I'm getting a lot of onion and a lot of garlic. Philippines is very big on garlic as well. There's garlic in everything, you can't escape it. This is fantastic. Mm. So mm. which one is the winner for these? It's so difficult, because I really love the chong, but honestly. You love the laying? Yeah. I'm this, gonna go with the laying too, but this yeah. one surprised me. This one turned out really good. But I would say the laying because it just has a better flavor. Yeah, it's like cream of spinach pie almost. So that's what lying kind of reminds me of. I actually thought this was spinach when I first tried it. Yeah, and I think I might be a little bit biased for the Akua Baboy. It's because I eat lechon all the time. So I'm a little biased. This was like very oniony, which is not bad, but I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. It kind of just hits you in the face. Like, bam, here we go. Onions. I mean, there's garlic as well, but this dish right here. That coconut really pops. I like the texture. 
the chicken bones weren't too much of a distraction for me. I mean, just make sure to chew your food slowly in the Philippines. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you gotta watch out for those chicken bones. I mean, that could be a choking hazard. In America, you know, you might get sued if you leave a piece of chicken bone in your spinach casserole. Not gonna be ideal. I mean, Billy chokes on that and then goes right. to the hospital with a but, chicken bone in his yeah. throat, so. But in the Philippines, if you ask Tita, she's just gonna tell you, you should've chewed slower. Yeah, no, they, they definitely have common sense like that. I just love the vibe here. I love the fact that they love dogs. They cherish their cats and all their animals. They even have a pet gecko on the wall. Yeah. And it's just a very chill vibe here. I love the food flavors that are amazing. I suggest you get here at 10 in the morning or like around that time to really experience the more fresh. You know, right now it's like, you know, 1, 2 yeah. p.m., which it's also fresh too, and they still are making new dishes. But yeah, this place opens at 5 in the morning, closes at 7 or 8 p.m. Right. Over here, I'm getting the real deal, authentic Filipino cuisine. Yeah. And, you know, I'm eating like the locals. I think every Westerner, every, you know, American, every foreigner coming to the Philippines at least once. Like, I'm not going to say don't go to BGC, don't go to Makati, Cebu, but at least once. Check out some of these provinces, check out some of these barangays, check out some of these neighborhoods that are kind of off the beaten path yes. and see what actual local Filipinos are eating. And what you'll find is that Filipino cuisine is very delicious, it's very comforting, and it's all made with love. I love that kind of homey vibe of this kind of kind of area. Yeah. It doesn't get any more homey than this. Exactly. It really does taste like an IPA. I mean, yeah, you know, there's sometimes where people will say like, oh, this kind of tastes like that, and it doesn't taste anything like that. No, this actually does taste like you drink half an IPA. Yeah, the aftertaste especially. It's like yeah. full-on medicine. It's super like Chinese yeah. medicine, and it's like IPA kind of mixture. It's like super strong, and it yeah. is a medicinal plant. It's a medicinal okay. vegetable. I mean, people actually take this, if they have cancer right. or something in China, they're gonna be eating a lot of bitter melon. I mean, it makes sense. But honestly, the way this was cooked and prepared and whatever kind of seasonings or aromatics and sauces they put mm. on it, it's fantastic. I don't think there's anything that could be done for the aftertaste. I think the aftertaste is just the aftertaste. And, yeah. you know, it's just kind of like with liver. I mean, liver's going to have an aftertaste, but the best thing that you can do is season it up properly, maybe stir fry it or, or fry it or, you know, have a different cooking method and then have your aromatics to kind of mask that overwhelming, overpowering flavor. Yeah, I mean, you could actually just like put a little bit into a soup and it will actually add a lot of flavor really? to it. Really? But yeah, let's go to uh, the next place for sure. All right. Okay, guys, so if anyone is looking for any puppies, if they want to adopt a puppy, these puppies are very cute. I think maybe in another four more weeks or something from when this video was filmed. So by the time this video comes out, the puppies will probably be ready to be adopted. And you know, these puppies are just so cute right now. Hello, little puppy. Can we be friends? Do you think mama will be mad? The mama? She won't mind. Okay. The mother's sleeping. So I can pet the doggy. Oh, baby puppy. Oh, this one is it's very cute with his mouth open. <laughs> I saw these puppies when they were like no eyes open even. Mm -hmm. 19, 19 days. 19 days old. Yeah. Oh, and this baby puppy is drinking from a bottle. Oh wow, that's a big puppy. Oh, what's up? Oh wow. Shy. She's shy. Shy puppy. Hi puppy. Well, yeah, I hope to help you guys get people to adopt the puppies. And we got these two. We got this dark dog, and then we got this golden dog. We got a lot of nice colored doggies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Okay, so hopefully someone adopts the puppies. I hope so. Bye-bye. What's the scariest food you've ever tried in the Philippines? What would you say? So there's a, uh, an egg dish. It's similar to balut. It's called pinoy. And it's, it's similar, it just doesn't have the embryo. And, you know, if you know anything about Balu, just imagine that without the embryo, and there you go. Pinoy is like more creamy than Balu. It's like got this like yellow, you know, it doesn't have the yolk that's like separate. It's like yeah. completely mixed up, like very, very yellowish color. But it's super creamy. Like it's like a custard, 
unsweetened custard almost, I feel like. Or how did you feel like it was? That's an interesting way to describe it. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan, but I also don't like eggs. So if you don't like eggs, you're probably not gonna like that dish. And you know, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Hello. I mean, sometimes there are just dishes that I don't like, like that are just, you know, they're not knockout dishes. They're kind of a miss, but I don't have to like everything in the Philippines to appreciate Filipino cuisine. Oh, sometimes they got things just dangling in front of their store just for, uh, you know, people that are five feet tall. Yeah. When you're like pushing six feet, it's a little bit difficult in the Philippines. I mean, even if you're 5'10", it's pretty dangerous. Yeah. 